Well, hello, Grace Point family. It's uh, amazing to be back with you again. Thank you for tuning in to these five-minute devotions. I hope they're an encouragement to you. I hope you're sharing these with your friends. We've gotten a great deal of feedback from this. And again, so honored to bring this to you. And we will continue to do that as we go forward. I wanted to share with you a thought today. I've had people ask me before questions like this. Why does it feel like my prayers sometimes just hit the ceiling and come back to me? Or why does it feel like God's not hearing my prayers? Well, we know that God always hears our prayers, but he, al he, he always uh, comes back sometimes with an answer that maybe we're not looking for. And so the idea I wanted to talk to you about today is why prayer goes unanswered. Why is it that sometimes our prayers go unanswered? Not unheard, but why do they sometimes go unanswered? Well, the Bible has a lot to say about that, actually. And in James chapter 4, there's a great passage of Scripture that gives us a, a series of different answers to that question. The first reason that prayer doesn't go answered is because they're not offered. It's because we don't even pray. In, in chapter 4 of James, in verse 2, it says, You lust and do not have, so you commit murder. You are envious and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. The first reason that prayer goes unanswered is, quite frankly, we don't pray. Our prayer lives are not where they need to ever be, and I pray that you're always constantly working on that. Every one of us in this, they're listening right now, and certainly this pastor's heart would have to admit there's times when our prayer lives get very stale. And so the first thing, that, first reason that prayer will go unanswered is because we don't pray. And so let me encourage you to pray. Number two, we pray with the wrong motive. He goes on to say, if you notice in verse three, of James chapter 4 these words you ask and do not receive because you ask with wrong motives so that you may spend it on your own pleasures I think sometimes when we're praying we know that we're being selfish in our prayer lives sometimes we're praying but we're praying with the wrong motives we just want our way we don't want God's will we want our will to be done well he tells us clearly if we pray with the wrong motive in mind then our prayers are going to go unanswered the third idea he says is we pray with the wrong spirit in our hearts there's a great passage of scripture that's very familiar to you out of Psalm 66, verse 18. It says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Think about that. If I harbor ill in my heart, if I harbor sin in my heart, God says, I won't even hear your prayers. So a third reason that we don't have answers to our prayers is because we pray with the wrong spirit in our heart and wrong motives in our heart. The fourth thing I've noticed in this particular text, and it's out of James chapter 5 and verse 16, we read these words, listen, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And so the fourth reason that our prayers go unanswered is because we're not earnest enough in our prayers. I looked up the word earnest, it literally means hot or glowing. In other words, our prayers sometimes, we just pray maybe one time nonchalantly, just asking God about something, and then we move on and forget about it. Something really happens in the heart of God when we're fervent in our prayers and when it's something on our heart where we're constantly talking to him moment after moment, day after day, not giving up on that because God sees what it really means to us. So sometimes our prayers go unanswered because we're just, we're nonchalant about it. We're not really going through, we're just going through the motions. We're not really hot. We're not really fervent. We're not glowing in it. It's not constantly something we talk about. Let me encourage you to be fervent in your prayers because he says, the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Well, there's one other thing I want to talk to you about. The, the final thing is probably the most important thing I could share with you of why our prayers go unanswered. It's because we don't even believe they're going to be answered. I think sometimes people come to the Lord in prayer with a fatalistic attitude saying, well, I know I'm going to talk to God about this, but he's probably not going to answer my prayer. Well, faith is a big part of what happens in answered prayer. If we go to the Lord not even believing he's going to hear us or not believing he cares or believing that he's going to answer our prayers, I can tell you right now, he's not going to. And so the last reason we need to make sure that we understand this, our prayers are not going to go answered if we pray, not believing that God can or will answer those prayers. Listen to me, prayer is the greatest gift God's given to us short of Jesus Christ himself. Prayer is talking to God who listens and responds just because he loves us. Let me encourage you today to be fervent in your prayer life because God does indeed answer prayer. Father, we love you and we want our prayers to be answered. So God, we ask you to search us and probe us and make sure there's nothing wicked within us, God, that our communication with you would not be hindered. I pray, God, that you'd bless our churches. We're scattered. We're so thankful, God, that we're at least getting together a little bit. But, oh, Father, open the windows of heaven that soon 
we could be together again in all the ways we were in the past. Continue to watch over our nation, bless our leaders, our president, our vice president, those, Father, who lead us and make key decisions. And very soon, Father, we pray that we, our land would be healed and we'd be back again doing the things we were doing before. In Christ's name I pray, amen.